Hello, everyone. For today's encouragement, I want to take you to James chapter 4, starting with verse 1. And the title is, What Causes Fights? Watch the news, watch the police reports, listen to your neighbors, listen to your own heart, look in your own family. You ask that question. Why do I feel this way? What causes these fights? Why didn't I get the parking place? Why didn't I get the boyfriend? Why didn't I get the raise? Somebody else gets what we had wanted, and oh, something wells up within us. What causes fights, James asked. Well, imagine yourself sitting in his office and uh, you have brought in these frustrations about your own heart and your own war and your own quarreling. And if you're not doing it, you're feeling like doing it. And you ask James to give you some counsel and help. And he does. Chapter four, verse one. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have. And so you kill. You cover, but you do not get. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. James' instruction leads him to ask us three questions that we must ask ourselves. The first one is, what causes fights and quarrels among you? What are you so upset about right now? He answers his own question. It's kind of embarrassing what he says. They, don't they come from the desires that battle within you? You desire and you don't have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. Reading this through, I must admit that that's really kind of self-centered in his exposure of my own heart. His finger is pointed at it, and I realize, geez, I'm acting pretty immaturely here. I don't get my own way, and so I fight for it? Why did I call them those names? Why did I fight to get what was rightfully mine? Well, it's uh, James' explanation that these are things that go on within our own heart, that war within us, the evil desires that are there. I know that feeling. When I travel to New York City to visit my son, I realize I need a parking place and I hate paying $51 for 12 hours of parking. So I look for a parking place along the street. The only way to get a parking place is to be there at the right time when some car moves out so that I can move in. And that all works unless there's somebody right ahead of me that sees the space first. They get the space. And what do I feel? What causes you fights and quarrels? You covet, you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. Evil desires within me. I'm not willing to give them what I want. How do I know that they're not a Christian that is praying to the Lord and asking the Lord to give them a parking place just like I am? And the Lord gives it to them. What causes fights? I'm a follower of Christ. I, I need to ask myself that question because there is an evil nature that wars within me. Second question, have you prayed about it? James says, you do not have because you do not ask God. Are you asking God or just taking matters into your own hands? Clearly, a follower of Jesus should be able to say, I am okay. I've asked the Lord, and if he doesn't give it to me this day, then I'll be okay with that. In fact, the Apostle Paul writes, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So when I pray about it, I'm really saying to the Lord, you provide for my need. If it's not here and now, you take care of me and you take care of them, the person that I'm fighting with. If we're asking God to meet our needs, then we can trust him to do so. We do not need to live our lives trying to grab something right before somebody else gets it or being frustrated because they got what we want. No, the Lord is in charge of parking places. The Lord is in charge of our needs, and he will provide. I need to learn to be content with that. So the second question is, have you prayed about it? The third question is, what's motivating you to get what you want? Well, James again says, this is a motivation that is wrong. He says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So if your motivation is to get what you want so that you will be happy, well, that's a pretty much the wrong motive, a result of a sinful nature. That's the reason James says, you do not get what you were fighting to get. You ask with wrong motives. My words, he points the finger to our own heart and says, you're self-centered, you're egotistical, you're selfish, you're childish. That's why you're quarreling. Now grow up. All of that hurts, but it's the truth. 
These are hard things to hear and totally opposite the instruction we get from Paul who tells us that our attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus who sets an example for us when he willingly allowed himself to be humiliated taking on flesh and blood and crucifixion. With this example, Paul writes, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility learn to consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also the interests of others. Why do you fight? Let them go. Let the other be served. So perhaps you find yourself fighting and quarreling right now. If not actually engaged in the fighting, you may feel like being engaged in the fighting. And if so, James asks you to ask these three questions of yourself. Number one, what's the cause of this fight or quarrel? Number two, have I prayed and asked God to give me what I need? And number three, what motivates me here, even if I get what I want, to get what I want. James ends chapter three saying this, peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. May we be peacemakers, even in the midst of anticipated fights. Amen.